Dr. Hamid Dokti. My beautiful daughter, his wife, I could not but look at her twice <laughs> and be proud that that is a good wife for a future president. My daughters that are here, apart from the beauty, I'm encouraged by the number in your team. It means we have hope if this government comes, we are going to have a voice for the women. It is my pleasure to receive you, and it is my pleasure to be part of Nigeria. The presidential candidate has scratched the back a little, but as a father, I will put the line straight. The first issue before us as Nigerians is to turn leadership into science. The meaning of science is the search for truth and the search for truth to be aimed at creating the best for humanity and in fact for all the animals. So in leadership, we as emirs in our training, the leader is an average sensible man holding the torch, looking at the best route, looking for the best route, and making sure he follows the best route correctly and encourages all the nations to follow the route that is good and correct. So the first thing in leadership is the clarity of purpose, honesty of purpose. Whoever seeks to be a leader should aim at his heart to be the best Nigerian, to serve Nigeria in the best of his ability, as we say always when we see it. And the best of ability comes when you become a scientist. A scientist is a person who sits down, investigates, finds out the best, and try to implement the best to serve the best purpose of the country. I hope Mr. Peter Obi will make effort to become that. The second point is, each person hoping to succeed, the first job is his mother, is to make sure he is healthy, he grows, he becomes a successful person. And the first job of a mother is to identify sickness before the child dies. And the sickness of Nigeria today is the leadership. Mental failure, and mental failure in my definition, means a situation where a person is busy doing what is useless and he failed to address what is most useful. <coughs> what does that mean? We sit down, big ceremonies, big persons, big objectives, big stories, the basic small issues before the nation are not even absorbed, are observed by the leader, not to talk of addressing it. So the first issue in Nigeria is total ignorance. Our most educated, unfortunately, can even be analyzed to be the most ignorant because they are ignorant of the reality of the situation of the country. We go on dreaming of solving problems when we failed to look at what the problems are in the first place. And no doctor can cure a disease if he cannot remember what the disease is. So fundamentally, all those in Hausa, we call them Shigashi Robashan. That means he has no cows and he wants to be a harder. That is to say, he has no knowledge of leadership. And those of us that are born into it, learn it, and we know what to do, we are called traditional. You are lying to yourselves. We are the sensible people who know the past and who are going to guide you into the future. So I will list one by one. The first problem of this country is that we have no skill of any type. There is no field that we have excelled in the skill. Starting from basic, if you want to make a needle today, nobody here will tell me where do I start. As a Nigeria of 200 million people, we don't have one engine we can call our own. One engine drives pumps, one engine drives generators, one engine drives our windmills. And whatever we need today comes from engine or the electric motor. I want Mr. Pogja will be to commit to us that he will wake up and say, what is the correct engine for Nigeria? What is the correct motor for Nigeria? And take the steps to reach that stage. 
The second element is the definition of comfort and honor. Once a leader thinks his comfort comes from income, from money, from material, then he has failed before starting. The comfort of a leader is for meeting the aspiration, aspiration of his people. And I give you a test. Go out of Jalingo and ask anybody, is there anything Amy has taken from you? You will get the answer. Is there anything Amy has given you? You will get the answer. What he has taken for, what I have taken from my people is zero. What I have given them is the right direction. That is the responsibility of leadership. The third is the word we call corruption. What is corruption? At the end of the day, corruption, pure and simple, is stupidity. Nothing more. You want to steal from your mother's pot. For who is she cooking in the first place? <laughs> when you steal from the nation, the nation is yours. You don't have another place. The first time I was in London, the policeman asked me, why have you come to do here? I said, I'm not a madman that in my country I left and I don't know what to do. Between me and you, my friend, is your visa, here it is. If you are satisfied, you let me in. If you are not satisfied, I have a place I'm proud of. You are not going to ask me any question more than what is provided in the condition for my coming here. Because I don't have the need to come here. Because you are the person who felt the need to come there first. And you told us you discovered us. I have also come to discover you. <laughs> so basically, the word corruption is a situation where somebody wants to take advantage of another person. And there is no way you can take advantage of another person without creating an opportunity for another person also to take advantage of you. So the moment you, do, you are corrupt, you are also laying foundation for more corruption. You are laying foundation for the corruption that comes on you, and we are all going to be losers. I have been miserable in many occasions in this country, but never more than the day I saw in the newspapers, justice or Supreme Court are accusing the chief judge of corruption. When did they know it? It's a basic question. When did they know it? He was corrupt, and they allowed him to become chief justice, then they are bats of the same feather. <laughs> so basically, we must address corruption at every level. And the first person to address corruption is the person that is leading. If you become president of Nigeria, and you change and determine that you will never be corrupt, nobody else will be corrupt. 100%. 100%. But I will tell Mr. Obi, I heard this 20 times, without any apology. Almost every presidential candidate comes here and tells me, and I tell him what is right, and he tells me I'm right, he's going to do that. Now you have taken the debt, and Jalingo will write a record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that you said we are recording what you are saying. I am also going to be happy that you are recording what I'm saying. <laughs> and the next day I come to us, I will not be told that I'm too small to reach the president. No. <laughs> you will never be. I'll come back here. So, I want to tell all Nigerians that we have a country to be proud of. All we need is to accept the truth. The truth is nobody is going to wipe our tears except our effort and commitment. We must all be committed to do the best. We must be committed to keep Nigeria one. We must be committed to ensure the progress of Nigeria. And Nigeria can only progress through our school skills, effort, and earnest achievement. We should stop compensating people for contributing to the destruction of the country. Completely. Completely. Until and unless we do that, we are all going to be doomed. And I pray we never will be. Now, finally, uh, my son, brother, and guests, I have sympathy for you. This is a man that there is no doubt he is of the age to be a president. He is of the maturity to be a president. The rest, of course, will be determined by God and others, not the Emir Muri only. <laughs> but all the facts before me clearly seems good and in his favor. <laughs> 